They've already helped England to the World Cup and now the big players are back with their clubs ahead of a huge weekend in the Premier League. We've got Arsene Wenger, Sir Alex Ferguson and Rafa Benitez in this week's Mania TV show. Plus reports from our chief sports reporter Oliver Holt and our Midlands man James Nursey on the big games this weekend. But we start with a look back at the win that sealed England's place at next summer's World Cup. Martin Lipton, our chief football writer, reflects on the job that Fabio Capello's done and the task that lies ahead. I mean, it's when the stadium for England last night showed they can be a force at the World Cup. Fantastic display. 5-1 over Croatia, playing the ghost of Wembley two years ago, and of Zagreb also under Steve McLaren for good. This was exactly what we wanted. A terrific performance, terrific goals, two from Frank Lampard, two from Stephen Gerrard and one from Wayne Rooney, night of the campaign. England looked like a force, looked like a team who can go to the World Cup and really do something this time. Let's just hope so. This was a great night for them, for England, for the fans and for Fabio Capella. Thanks Martin. Now, one of the heroes of Wednesday was, of course, Glenn Johnson, who's been fantastic going forward for Liverpool and England this season. The Liverpool boss, Rafa Benitez, has been telling us just how happy he is with his new summer signing. How big a role did Glenn Johnson play in last night's performance for you? I think that Glenn has been really good since the, the first day for us and also for England. You can see that the, his uh, offensive mentality, his uh, deliveries, his crosses, is really good. So. I was surprised with the criticism about uh, his performance the other day, but he's a very good player. How good? He's good. He can be better, yes, can be better, so he knows. Uh, he's someone that is keen to learn, so I think that uh, Capello was supporting him the other day, and 100% uh, we will support him. Is it the defensive side of his game that he needs to improve then? Yeah, but he's so good attacking that uh, sometimes it's more difficult for the defenders of the other team to, to stop him than for him to, to be worried about defence. How low do you get the balance, if you like? Because it, it did come under scrutiny again last night. His defense I think performance. he's a decent defender, so uh, clearly he can improve in defence, but he's a decent defender and he's very good attacking. So if you talk about balance and average, I think he has a very good uh, balance. Now, tomorrow sees Emmanuel Adebayor's first meeting with Arsenal since the Gunners sold him to Manchester City during the summer. The fans weren't sorry to see him go. But Adebayor started like a house on fire at City with three goals in his first three league games. Despite that, the Arsenal manager, Arsene Wenger, isn't sorry to see the striker go. Here's what he had to say. On the game this weekend, um, Emmanuel Adebayor has started the season on fire. On fire. On fire. Do you, um... And we have to, to, to uh, put the fire out. Yeah. Do, do you regret not being able to hold on to him? I mean, going all the way back to... No, I, I don't regret because when you make decisions like that, you, you, uh, it is because you believe... Uh, I believe we lost a great player, but I believe as well we have other great players behind. And uh, I can tell you, uh, for example, we have... Uh, because I believe in Eduardo, because I believe in, uh, in uh, Vela, because I believe in Ben, uh, and of course Van Persie was already a big asset in our team. But we have a needed striking force, and uh, we have even Walcott who can be transformed into a striker. So we have a needed striking force to cope with that. Fighting talk. Well, on the line to speak about a massive game in prospect is our chief sports writer, Oliver Holt. Ollie, good morning. Hi, Darren. Now, Ollie, the only player who needs no motivation whatsoever for this contest is indeed Adebayor. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he, he's, he's said a lot already since he left about how badly he felt the Arsenal fans treated him. Um, and I'm sure that the Arsenal fans who travel up to Eastland at the weekend are going to give him plenty of stick when he runs out. So he's not going to need any motivation. But he's playing brilliantly at the moment. He's been really the absolute star for Manchester City so far. So I think he is going to be the one to watch. Yes, sadly for City, both Rubinho and Tevez are injured. How much do you think that will weaken City? I'm not sure. I mean, Rubinho, I don't think, will weaken them much at all. I mean, I, I know that he scored a lot of goals for City last season, but whenever I saw him play, he was, frankly, he was useless. And against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, he was worse than useless. So, um, I'm not being a big fan of his, and I think they're signed, actually, at Manchester City this season tentative signs that Mark Hughes has begun to marginalise him slightly. He certainly brought him off a couple of times, he left him out of the game, 
I think uh, Rubinho's place at City, frankly, is under threat anyway. So I don't think they'll miss him. I do think they'll miss Tevez um, because I think this is a big test for City, their first real big test. Um, and I think they'll miss the running and, and the class of Tevez. But, again, I have to say, City are a much stronger side, I think, already than they were um, for much of last season, particularly with Gareth Barry. I mean, I think Gareth Barry has been their most important signing so far. So as long as he's playing... City are still going to be a vastly different proposition to the team they were last season. And just finally, a score prediction from you? Yeah, it's a fascinating clash. It's, it's very hard to call. Um, I, I'm going to go with City, just because I think it'll be a great atmosphere at Eastland. City will be right up for it. They know how important this game is. They've got Manchester United coming up the week after. It's a huge couple of weeks for them. Um, but I think confidence is really high at City. And even though Arsenal have made a great start and uh, you know a lot of us will be rooting for them during the course of the season because of the type of football they play. I just fancy City. Thanks, Ollie. Our Chief Sports Reporter, Oliver Holt, who will be at tomorrow's game between City and Arsenal. Now, just down the M6, there's another fairly tasty game in prospect with Birmingham up against their big rivals, Aston Villa. It takes place on Sunday morning and James Nursey, our man in the Midlands, is waiting to speak to us on the line. James, good morning. Hello, Darren. Hi there. Now, the last time these two teams met, James, Villa won very easily. Which way do you see it going this weekend? Well, you're right. Villa won 5-1 last time, but I think it's going to be a lot closer on this occasion at St Andrews. And I actually, um, I'm afraid to say, I think it's going to be a draw, Darren. And which of the two managers would you say is under most pressure, James? Mm. Yes, I think both managers are under pressure. Uh, O'Neill is the second biggest spender in the transfer window, spending over £40 million, but it's going to be hard for him to improve on last season's sixth-place finish, having lost Martin Larson and Gareth Barry. So I think he's got a hard job on, on his hands to keep the fans happy there. McLeish, um, he's got a potential new owner waiting on the wings. He's not happy, he said himself, with, with the strength of his squad. So he has also got a difficult task um, trying to uh, keep the club up. Obviously a big rivalry, but we just hope we don't see a repeat of the scenes that we witnessed when West Ham played Millwall last month. Yeah, you're right. That brought back memories for many uh, Midlanders, I imagine, of some of the initial contests between these two clubs in the Premier League in that, that first season when Birmingham came up in 0203. Uh, Birmingham were the winners on, on both occasions at, at home and away, but both matches were marred by crowd trouble. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the games are no longer played in the evening and are played on, on a Sunday at a much earlier kickoff time. Finally, a score prediction for me, James. Uh, I know it sounds a bit laying down, but I think it's going to be a one all draw. Uh, Villa are going to come with an unchanged lineup, I think, which will be a 4 5 1 formation. Uh, I can't see them scoring too many times. And Birmingham are unbeaten at home in, in 10 games and they're yet to concede at, at, at this season. So I think it's going to be pretty tight. James, thank you. Our man in the Midlands, James Nursey. Still lots to come in our weekend preview show. We've got tips from one half of the Mirror Betting Boys, uh, John Curl. He had a good week last week. And a championship roundup from Oliver Pickup on our website. But first, Ollie was talking earlier about the match between Spurs and Manchester United at White Hart Lane this weekend. The United bosser Alex Ferguson gave us his thoughts ahead of the game. So, um, Tottenham, fantastic start this season, man. <clears throat> um, having watched a couple of their videos yesterday, they're going to be a handful for us on Saturday, but that's the nature of Premier Division anyway. So hopefully we can get the right team, pick the right team and get a good result. Time for your messages and lots of you still in international mode. We were talking the other day about Ronaldo and Messi possibly missing out on the World Cup because their countries were not doing well enough. Paul Murphy thinks it will be good if the likes of Portugal and Argentina don't go to the World Cup. They lost again on Wednesday night, Argentina, their fifth in their group. Uh, Paul says here, maybe it will give some of the big heads something to think about. It didn't do England any harm a couple of years ago. That might be, but I've got to say, I do like to see the big countries at the World Cup. Uh, King Kung Fu Cantona says uh, Chelsea will be stronger for the transfer ban on them from FIFA. He says here they are an ageing squad so bringing players in is a necessity. This will hurt them in terms of this season. And Evertonian says on the whole diving issue that he'd like to see a player miss a penalty on purpose if they knew that they got it undeservedly. Not mentioning any names. <coughs> Rooney. 
Now, keep your messages coming in on all things football, and we get through them every week right here on Mirror Football TV. But back to the weekend games, and it looks an easy one for Liverpool, but a tricky test for Chelsea. Martin Booth is from our sister paper, The Sunday Mirror. He's in the newsroom to round up the rest of this weekend's Premier League games. Thanks, Darren. Yes, indeed. Let's look ahead to the best of the rest in the Prem on uh, the weekend. First of all, Blackburn against Wolves. Ten goals in their previous two Premier League meetings, but don't hold your breath. It's been more than five hours of playing time since Blackburn scored it in the Prem at home. Wolves, good on the road last season. They've already got a win under their belts this time round. They won't be scared of going to Ewood Park. I can see that one being a draw. Liverpool versus Burnley. Liverpool, of course, desperate to continue their recovery after that atrocious start to the season. Uh, Burnley, they're going to be formidable at home, as we've seen already. Not so hot on the road. I can see that being a home win for Liverpool. Uh, Portsmouth against Bolton. First week in September and we're already talking about relegation six-pointers. This is the battle of the bottom two. Desperate start to the season for both of them. Pompey have lost their last five Prem games. Bolton really struggling for goals. This looks like a draw to me. Stoke versus Chelsea. Now Stoke, as we know, are pretty tough to beat at home. They've only lost twice there in the 18 games since Chelsea went there and 1-2-0 last season. But it's got to be said, Chelsea are on a roll at the moment. They've uh, won the last nine of their Prem games, and I can see them winning this one as well. That looks like an away win to me. Sunderland versus Hull. Um, Sunderland are going along quite nicely, um, despite their, um, their poor recent home record. Hull, uh, they've got the busiest keeper so far in my hill. He's already had 20 saves to make this season. I think he'll be having to make a few more in this game. That could be a, a home win for Sunderland. Wigan against West Ham. Um, Wigan are still searching for their first home goal. West Ham already won on the road this season. I could see them winning this one as well. That's an away win for me. And then turning to Sunday, Fulham against Everton. Two teams who started the season very slowly, looking to pick up the speed. Fulham, they've only had three shots on target so far. Lucky enough, one of them went in and gave them three points at Portsmouth. Uh, Everton, they will feel that their luck is starting to turn after their win against Wigan last time out. I can see this one being a draw, a point for both. And don't forget, you can read all about it in the Sunday Mirror. Back to you, Darren. Thanks, Martin. Lower down the leagues, there are some fixtures that look just as intriguing as the ones in the top flight. Oliver Pickup is in the Mirror website newsroom with more details. Oli? Well, Darren, there are two games that stand out in the Championship uh, this weekend. The first being Ipswich's trip um, to the Riverside Stadium. Roy Keane goes back to the northeast. Uh, his team having only recorded two points from their first five games and with the pressure ratcheting up I'm sure Middlesbrough fans would like to stick the knife in him even more. Um, they'll be without Al Alfonso Alves who's, who's moved to Qatari side Al Said for six million as well as Tunkai so they'll be looking for another source of goals. In the lower leagues uh, it's top versus bottom League One Charlton play host to Southampton uh, Charlton have won all six of their games and it's only uh, four years ago these two were playing each other in the Premier League in League Two. Um, Knox County, Sven Goran Eriksson's Knox County of course. Um, take on Northampton Town who are in 16th. It'll be a tough test for the sixth place side and Sol Campbell, former England international defender, could make his debut for the Magpies. Over to you Darren. Thanks Ollie. Now last week Curly, our better half of the betting boys, covered himself in glory with two winners out of two on his debut. So we want to know, John, can you continue your winning streak this week? Right, thanks, uh, Darren. Uh, we'll have a go. Uh, first up, it's uh, Manchester City taking on Arsenal. Um, that can only mean one thing, and that's um, Emmanuel Adebayor taking on his old tide. Um, we tipped Adebayor to be uh, the Premiership uh, golden boot this year. Uh, we think he's, he's got a really good chance of getting that. He's got three from three already for City. Um, he's 6-4 to four to, to score in this game against his old club, Arsenal, which is the same price as Arsenal are to win the game. We think Arsenal will win this game. It's a tough examination for Manchester City, and we don't think that they'll pass that exam. So it's Arsenal for us at 6-4. to four. Uh, Moving on to the bet of the, well, the bet of the weekend which is really the bet of all time. Um, and we fancy uh, Dagenham and Redbridge uh, to beat Chesterfield. Uh, Dagenham and Redbridge have played three games at home in the league this season. They've won all three and scored 13 goals. Uh, the bookies have priced them up at 11 to 10 against, which to me is one of the bets of the year. 
It's just it's a gift from the Almighty to every single punter. Um, they just look a really, really good thing, and we suggest that um, you get on Dagenham and Redbridge. Anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Uh, read um, the Betting Boys column um, in the Daily Mirror on Saturday. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from uh, my betting boy chum, uh, Kevin Price, uh, the Simon Cowell, to my Louis Walsh. As usual, we'll see if John's right. Remember, you can see all of our in-depth Premier League and Championship previews in this weekend's Daily Mirror newspaper and on mirrorfootball.co.uk. There's more mail for you on Monday. Enjoy your football and I'll see you then.